So I have some water flowing in this direction very fast. It hits this person. We know it knocks them over. There's a force there. Where does that force come from? We can look at Newton's third law. The force of this water acting on the person pushing them must be equal to the force of the person pushing on the water in the opposite direction. Okay, so we make use of this. Force can also be thought of as the rate of change of momentum. Why is this helpful? Well, we can take a chunk of water here. Let's say one meter. We can calculate its momentum because V naught is equal to 45 meters per second. Right here, the water may still be moving very fast, but if you take this momentum and this momentum and add them together in opposite directions, momentum final is equal to zero. So all this momentum from this water, all momentum that this water has is lost, is given to the person pushing on them while that person is pushing on the water. We can go back and look at this formula if this makes sense. Momentum is just mass times velocity. If the mass stays constant, we can pull that out and we have m dv dt. Well, dv dt is the rate of change of velocity is acceleration, is mass times acceleration. So this equation is not unknown to us. And so now it just boils down to some math. We know that the momentum here, the initial momentum, is it just equal to mass times velocity. And the mass is equal to the density of water, which I know is a ton, 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed, times the volume. Okay, so what's the volume of this going to be? Well, it's one meter long. This is a cylinder. So it's going to be length times a cross-sectional area of this circle, right? So length times a cross-sectional area. So that's just one meter times pi radius squared. Okay, and what is the radius? I said it was one inch in diameter, I think. So the radius is 2.54 centimeters divided by two. The answer comes out to be on the order of 20 kilogram meters per second when you work it out. This is your initial momentum. And so we want to ask ourselves, what is the force? So this is going to be 20 kilogram meters per second in the amount of time that it lost that momentum. Well, it's not losing the momentum now. It's not losing it now. It's losing it right here. As long as it takes for that water to make this turn is going to be one meter divided by 45 meters per second. The meters cancel is 1 45th of a second. So that's 1 45th of a second. The 45 in the denominator comes up to the numerator, and we have about 900 kilogram meters per second squared, or 900 newtons. Okay, about 1,000 newtons. Um, that would be the force of gravity on 100 kilograms, or about 220 pounds. Would that be enough to knock you over, 220 pounds, pushing you this way? Probably for me.